This podcast contains discussions of child abuse, sexual repression and sexual abuse, suicide, racism, misogyny, PTSD and PTSD symptoms, and spiritual oppression and abuse, including guilt, shame, and fear. In most episodes, we will be mentioning some of these concepts in a general way without any graphic detail. If any of these topics or other triggering topics will be mentioned in great detail, we will let you know at the beginning of each individual episode, as well as in the show notes for that episode. Welcome back to the Leaving Eden Podcast. My name is Gabrielle Hakoen, and I am here today on this beautiful day with my co-host. Hi, I'm Sadie Carpenter, and some of you might be sorry to hear this, although there are a few people who will probably celebrate this, but I am not running for office in 2022. Neither am I. I don't feel like I'm the guy who is really cut out for that line of work. Do you think I would be good at, at working in government? I think you'd be good at the people part of it, but I think you'd get bored. Interesting. I think I think you'd have really big ideas and they'd be good ideas, but you wouldn't be able to get them through because that's how government works. Yeah. Public office person that Bernie would have been if he had become president. I don't know how I feel about that. I have mixed feelings about Bernie Sanders, uh, but Just saying like, that out loud might get me canceled. Well, I don't know. Like, okay, you got, you got a lot of ideas. Some of them yeah. are actually really quite good, but I feel like if he had been elected, a lot of it would have been just like him being frustrated. He has this mindset of like, I've got an idea. It's really good. I'm going to do it. And I think you're that way. Yeah. Like you get an idea. It's really good. You're going to do it. And then if there's red tape, then I think you'd be frustrated by that. I don't think I'd make a good politician either, though. But you know who I'd be better than? Who? Jim Bob, Jim Bob Duggar. Yeah, so this is a special episode that we weren't planning on doing, but then we saw the news. Um, and it seems like the Duggars are all over the news of late. And not for good things uh, that you want to be on the news for, uh, as we all know. Josh's pedophilia trial is coming up soon. His trial starts towards the end of November. We have cleared our schedules, stocking up on Red Bull, getting mm. our little blazers ironed so we can pretend to be newscasters whole nine yards we're ready to go ready to cover the Duggar trial for you because we know you're going to want to hear that but i thought that we just wouldn't be discussing them until then nope 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 but today we're going to talk about them but before we get into that uh, the leaving eden podcast is the podcast well we started that we were talking mostly about sadie carpenter's life in and escape from the independent fundamental baptist cult but then we branched out into other things so now we talk about that cult we talk about other cults religion fundamentalism cult ideology and the present and real danger that they pose to society as a whole. We seek to promote freedom of mind, freedom of thought, and freedom of religion. So if you like this show, if you want to support the show, you can subscribe to our Patreon where we have extended and uncensored episodes. You can also uh, go to our Facebook group, which is going to be facebook.com slash groups slash Eden Exodus. Almost 600 people in that group as of now there's new posts every day really moving really heartfelt stuff from our listeners talking about their experiences you can join our subreddit same sort of thing i love our group because it's got kind of my personality where i'll get super deep and talk about really dark stuff and then five minutes later i'm laughing about something there's like memes and jokes and funny snarking and also people sharing incredibly sweet stories and people being very supportive of that that's not what we're here today to talk about we're here to talk about um i'd rather talk about that yeah i would rather talk about that too uh today we are talking about <sighs> jim bob duggar um you know, yeah. I, we, like Sadie said earlier, we weren't planning on talking about the Duggars. Uh, usually I like to not talk about them because but if, if my last name were Duggar and I were doing stuff in this like time period currently right now in the year of our Lord 2021, I w if I were a deposed reality TV star and my family member was awaiting trial for possession of child sex abuse images, uh, commonly known as child pornography, personally... I would be trying to keep a low profile. Yeah. 
<clears throat> that's that's what I would be doing as well. I do want to make, I think this is a good time to make a note. We've learned that child sex abuse images or child sex abuse materials are the more appropriate terms to describe that thing. The legal term codified into state and federal law is child pornography. So we are going to, what we've decided is best to do for us is to use those terms in the appropriate context. So when we are talking about the thing, we're going to use the appropriate term child sex abuse images. When we're talking about the crime, we're going to use the name of the crime. Okay. And hopefully th that's what I think is like the most appropriate thing because that way we're not mixing terminology. We might get them mixed up by accident. We're, so, we're uh, doing our very best. Neither one of us is like a real big fan of talking about this, but we also very deeply feel that it needs to be covered. So yeah. We're, we're doing our best. Hopefully that's the right thing to do. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah, this will be over soon and then we won't have to talk about it anymore. But yes, if, if this were me, if my high profile family member were about to go on trial for a awful thing, I'd be doing what most of the Duggars are doing, which is taking kids, taking pictures of my kid off of social media, keeping a low pro profile, shilling vacuum cleaners, <laughs> not doing all, they're all shilling this like Roomba thing right now. Not doing anything that would attract more media attention, but not Jim Bob Duggar. No siree. So uh, we saw on the internet recently that Jim Bob Duggar uh, has announced that in he will be seeking a state Senate seat in his home state of Arkansas. So part of the, the, the state Senate, not the not like running for senator to like go live in Washington, but to like uh, uh, for a state Senate. He is seeking so he's going to run in the election that is going to be uh, one year from now in 2022 he is running in arkansas's seventh senate district which i looked this up it is located in the northwest corner of the state not quite on the border with missouri but up in that area i have never been to arkansas but sadie i trust that you have as a, a good you know corn-fed midwestern woman uh, okay, what, what are your experiences with I should let you know that Arkansas is not the Midwest. <laughs> Just, is it? What is it? I don't know, but it's not the Midwest. Well, is Missouri Midwest? Missouri's Missouri is the Midwest, mid yes. Because earlier on the show, you said that Arkansas isn't the South. You said it's not the South. You said it's not the Midwest, but you said it's redneck. So which yes. which one is it? <clears throat> what is it? You know, I, I don't really know. Maybe we have some listeners from Arkansas who will write in and let us know. I think some people from Arkansas would say that they're Southern. Southern Arkansas is the South. I just, I don't know what Northern Arkansas is because I, is I wouldn't strictly consider it the South anyway. Well, it's I, the Ozarks. That's what that is, it's right? It's the Ozarks. That's what. That's exactly what it is. That's the word I was looking for. So I've driven through Arkansas a few times. Um, that thing that I was telling you about, where they have a recreation of the temple, but it's about G or the tabernacle, but it's about Jesus. <laughs> Remember, I told you about that thing. That's, yes, that's in Little Rock. That's that's in Arkansas. And then the guy dressed up as the Levite priest. Or hot yes. Yeah, that was that was really mad. My culture is not your costume. Um, <laughs> also, those people that were the priests, those were literally like my ancestors, like personally my ancestors. Yeah, your, pers your actual ancestors, not just like your people, that. but your ancestors. <laughs> yeah. That was fun. I sent Gabrielle a picture of um, there's this this Christian place in Arkansas where they have a, a recreation of the tabernacle and like the place Jesus was born and some other biblical things. And they have guys that walk around and they're the tour guides and they wear like Levite priest uh, recreation. So I sent a picture to, to Gavi and he was not a fan. No, I was I'm not. Sorry. <laughs> and I'm sorry for laughing. But I mean, that, that, that's just one place. That's just anyway. one place in Arkansas. Like, well, what would you say the general vibe of it is? Like, would you say it's the kind of place that would elect a man whose name is Jim Bob to state Senate? Let me ask you this. Have you ever seen Shit's Creek? I have seen Schitt's Creek. It is a great show. It's that. Huh. It's pretty much exactly like that. Well, that seems all right. Yeah, I mean, it is all right. So what you might have in that area of the country, so you've got small towns, like a few hundred people to maybe 15,000 people. 15,000 people is like, that's the big town where the Walmart is. Hmm. And it's all built, like the big town is all built around the truck stops and the Walmart and like maybe they're big enough to have a movie theater. The downtown areas of these small towns are fantastic. They're beautiful, turn of the century, walkable, like like super downtown Beaverton. I don't know if you've been there. Oh, I know what you're talking like about. Like yeah. that. 
It looks um, like a it looks like a frontier town. Yeah, amazing. Yeah. But like if that was like half of the town and the other half was residential, oh. that would be like that would be what these towns are like. And a lot of like new urbanism type revitalization has happened in small towns, even southern towns in the last 10 to 20 years. And it's it's really sweet. There's a lot of legacy businesses, you know, Joe's grocery store and Joe owns the grocery store. And so did his dad and so did his granddad and so did his great granddad who founded it or Betty Sue's beauty parlor and Betty Sue owns it and is like 85 and has been doing wet set rollers since 1960. Like, <laughs> it's a really, it's a really nice way of life. And so that area of the country, there are urban centers um, and there's a lot of rural areas where there isn't a town, but towns, that's what it's like. It's very Schitt's Creek. You know, I was thinking about this uh, just now because I was thinking, you know, I'm sure there's good food there if you happen to be a connoisseur of grits and hush puppies. The best onion rings I've ever had in my life. We're at a small town diner in a little town like that, just a few hours down the road from where the Duggars live in Atoka, Oklahoma. Oh, OK, because that's the thing that I was thinking of, though, because like Southern cooking, you know, with like, you know, where it's like corn and, you know, grease and pork and like that kind of thing that's in right that's like really in right now even you know up here in portland up mm -hmm. here in like the 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 blue parts of the country we like that we like that style of cooking up here we we really appreciate it so you know i'm sure the food down there is is top tier there is a lot of good to say about small town america i i would i would love to live someplace like that I, I would die for having, like, I don't know, a small farm, nothing, nothing made, not a big operation, but like some chickens and a good sized garden and a big old canning cellar for all the mm. stuff I can and be less than an hour from the city so that I could see bands when bands come through and I can still go shopping and see concerts. But that would be great. You'd give uh, you like send people canned peaches for Christmas is, is oh, your. Yeah. I can just imagine that. So if you are a fan of this podcast and you are from Arkansas, just making sure that we say this, this is a pro Arkansas podcast. OK, this is yeah, this is a pro a pro small town podcast like from I'm going to get on my political pedestal and I'm going to time myself at 30 seconds because that worked the last time um, people <laughs> people who ignore the potential for more liberal values in small towns, I believe are really foolish because a lot of small town people are already already hold in high value taking care of each other and being kind to each other. And people who believe that all people from small towns or all people from the South are bigots and wouldn't be interested in anything they have to say. I think that's really short sighted. OK, I'm done. But I get testy in general about big city people who hate on that small town way of life, like all all Southerners and are married to their cousins and don't know anything about anything. Like there are absolutely, I don't want to romanticize this too much because there are absolutely issues. It shouldn't be ignored. But what shouldn't be ignored as well is the real revitalization that's going on in some Southern areas and some smaller towns, the growth of small businesses, people moving back home with their shiny new college degrees to re build and revitalize the town that they grew up in there's potential in those places and i get really aggravated when people want to think that everybody who is from either the south or a small town are all like beverly hillbillies break out of your bubbles people there's value everywhere in this country there is and just so any arkansas fans know i will cheer for the razorbacks if they are not playing alabama and if they aren't in the way of our championship roll tide roll tide <laughs> the problem is, as I mentioned, that these beautiful small towns and rural areas that I really I clearly have a lot of heart for and a lot of passion for have some real issues. If we're talking about red states, they may be in a state that hasn't accepted the ACA Medicaid expansion. They may be in a state that has a meth issue. And while extremist hate groups like the KKK, for example, can and do exist absolutely everywhere in America, if there's a 100 person clobbered in, a, in Portland, that's one thing. That's a fraction of the percent of the population. That's bad. That's not good. No. But it's a fraction of the percent of the people that you would interact with on a daily basis. If there's a hundred person clavering in a town of 1500 people, that's a much, much bigger problem. So that's kind of what I see of the, the political climate and whether they did elect a man named Jim Bob to state Senate. 
that was a very long answer to your very short <laughs> question to say, yeah, I think they would. But I didn't see a need to do a whole episode on Jim Bob running for state senate. We know that he's been in politics before. Of course, Josh was involved in politics, buddy buddy with Ted Cruz before <laughs> with the when he worked at the um oh what was the what was the name of the place? Family Action something. Family yeah, Resource Center. Uh, Josh Duggar has been taking some family actions. Unfortunately. I have I'm sorry, I have to make these jokes. It makes these episodes bearable. Apologies. So Josh Duggar, um, he worked for a PAC, the name of which I'm not sure that I'm remembering correctly, in Washington, DC, uh before the first scandal broke from the thing that happened when he was a teenager and also before he got caught up in the Ashley Mad Madison scandal. And Jim Bob's been in politics and Jed has run for office. Like people, people in this family run for office. I didn't think this was news. And the family originally got discovered when Jim Bob was running for state house Repre of representatives over 20 years ago. Did he win? Yes. Jim Bob served from 1999 to 2003 in the Arkansas State House of Representatives. I look at this as like an opportunity to get inside the mind of a James Robert Duggar, a man who, like, he could be called James Robert Duggar. That's a or good name. Or J.R. Duggar. Like, J.R. Yeah. would be fine. <laughs> J.R., but instead chooses uh, willingly to go by the name of Jim Bob. You know, you, I mean, you see, like, we have spoken on this podcast many a time about what actually constitutes biblical patriarchy as practiced by jim bob duggar actually we've talked about this quite recently several times uh and the most central point of the system is that this man is in charge of everything that goes on within his own household that includes his wife that includes his children he is probably the most famous proponent of this system in the world yet he is currently plagued by the sexual abuse scandal that began years ago within his own home under his own roof. And rather than behave with humility and introspectiveness, you know, and really consider whether the choices he has made have been good choices for him and his family. This man has made the incredible decision that he should be in the government. So we're dealing with two issues here. This is what swayed me to wanting to do an episode about this. First, we have the issue, which is not uncommon at all, of people from extremist groups wanting to be political representatives. This is not new in any way, shape, or form. David Duke was in the Louisiana House of Representatives, and then he also ran unsuccessfully for Louisiana State Senate, Governor of Louisiana, U.S. House of Representatives, U.S. Senate, and President. Mm -hmm. Kind of... <laughs> He, David Duke, man. I, I do think it's funny that he <laughs> failed a lot. But we talked about how the IFB is generally less politically active, but how both Vision Forum and the heavily overlapping uh, IBLP ATI circle are men are more encouraged to seek political office. So why is this? Is this, is this more to do with, the, like, they say men are patriarchs, and so, like, you should be in charge? And so they tell, like, a man, oh, if you're going to be in charge of your family, then you'd be in good in charge of, like, everybody's family? So it's to, the idea is somebody's got to be in charge. It might as well be a super godly man who's going to lead America back to God. They and they will they they'll be pretty bald faced about this. They'll say it's to take our country back. It's to return Christian morals and values to America. But like the IFB would support that too. But why is it that IFB men don't do this as much as like IBLP guys do? Because the IFB is more focused on you build your local church, like you make your pastor oh. on a level with a governmental authority, which we can see play out in practice with um like the. I believe it was Paul Chapel who th who threw a huge fit and almost got arrested over mask mandates uh, early pandemic. I think mm. it was him. If I'm wrong, somebody let me know. But he probably wasn't the only one. True. Uh, I can't remember. No, it wasn't him. It was Jack Tr Jack Treber. It was Jack Treber, one of those California IFBs. So the IFB, it's more about building your local church. So what the men are expected to do is provide for their family, tithe to the church, make money so they can give it to the church, and also go soul winning, run bus routes, teach Sunday school. It's all about the church, like their local church. The IBLP and ATI are not nearly as focused on the local church, which is why Bill Gothard is not a pastor. If pastorhood was the way to power, 
in the IBLP, Bill Gothard would be a pastor. He's not. Um, the IBLP is about building your family and the country, which the same thing that I just talked about in the complementarian episode, where in the IFB umbrella graphic, it's God, pastor, husband, wife, children. And in the IBLP one, the Gothard one, it's God, husband, wife, children. There's no pastor in that line of command, chain of command. Oh, okay. And that's also to do with the thing that we talked about with Heather, where it's the 200 year plan where we're going to outbreed them. Yes. So, oh, yeah. okay. That makes sense. So okay, the IFB cool. is not apolitical, but the IBLP is far more political and they have a very set political agenda. The IFP political agenda is like, don't let the gays get married and don't let people get abortions. The IBLP political agenda is outbreed them, take over the country and make a Christian theocracy in America. And That's way scarier. Yes. Yes. It is way scarier. <laughs> um, yeah. I think this is something that gets overlooked. We all know about these dog whistles that people use, like take our country back or return to Christian values, whatever. We all recognize them, but I, I wish people would understand like that this is a deeply held belief because that makes it scarier. There's just this, it's a potent cocktail of beliefs. It's Christian dominionism, which is the belief that God has given America to Christians as a Christian nation. There's patriarchy, moral beliefs, quote unquote, moral beliefs, like being against gay marriage and abortions. And then there are like false beliefs about the founding fathers and what they intended and who they even were. And it's all of these things mixed together. And it's been distilled down over several generations. And it's become very strong. Even the people who were influential in this, like Howard Phillips, Doug Phillips' father. While I don't like the idea of a person who doesn't believe in certain rights for everyone being a part of the legislative bodies, that in itself isn't new or unusual. Especially in Arkansas. Especially especially in Arkansas. And like Jim Bob's been in government before. And like, I don't like it, but the world didn't come to an end. It's not like he's running for president. This wouldn't have been enough on its own for me to feel like we needed an update episode about this. So here's the thing that I don't get is that is if but like the whole philosophy behind this is that if you raise your children under this strict patriarchy, you will have a godly family. Your family will live with godly lives and uh, godly values and be blessed. So shouldn't the patriarch lose all of his credibility if his firstborn son is like legit a pedophile? And it's not like nobody saw this coming. There was a time that Josh molested his sisters. There was a time that Josh molested the babysitter. There was a time that Josh beat up Danica Dillon, allegedly. And he had the OK Cupid fiasco. He was on Ashley Madison. Now he's on trial for uh, possession. Uh, or should I, is which one do I say for this one? You know, you can probably you can probably say either one. OK, he's on trial for possession of child sex abuse images. Uh, this man, like his whole life. Jim Bob's whole life is around raising children the right way. That's his whole image. And one of his children ends up this wrong. How does this man have any credibility? So that's the other issue that we're dealing with here. And this is why I felt like I wanted to say something about this. Okay. What do you want to say? So I want to, I want people to think about our vision forum episode right at the end. At the end of that episode, I ended up being pretty mad. I was mad because Doug Phillips, through Vision Forum, encouraged so many people to live by a certain code of rules. And then the minute it didn't suit him anymore, he just turned around and started doing whatever he wanted. Like, he did whatever he wanted when he abused that per that woman for years. Um, yeah. Oh. He uh, so he did gag he, thinking about it. Oh. He did whatever. Yeah, I'm like I'm like mentally skipping over it in my brain. Um, dissociation, fun and cool. If you want to hear our mental health episode, <laughs> <laughs> uh, like three weeks ago, four weeks ago, yeah. So uh. so Doug like he did whatever he wanted when he abused her for years and years and years, and then when he got caught, he just quit living by the rules that he told everybody else to live by. Just started doing whatever he wanted that makes me mad because not because somebody isn't allowed to change or change their beliefs because lord knows i have but it made me mad because there are probably hundreds if not thousands of people who are still suffering under the rules that phillips espoused but he gets off scot-free and he's doing his own thing yeah he didn't even have to go to jail for it Right, I just he had think, a, like a legal settlement, like a, a it's civil not even settlement. That. It's just like to... there are people not going to movies because he said don't go to the movies, but he's probably going to movies. 
Yeah. There are people wear like dressing a certain way or not owning a television or like f- following any number of rules that he put forth because he said to, but now he's not doing it. I just feel like if you are the leader that makes up rules and makes people follow them, you should have to follow your own rules, even if you change your mind about them, because there are going to be people who continue to follow your rules even if you change that it's not that's not fair to me and that's what jim bob is doing here in the ifb and the iblp if someone's child is what they call rebellious especially a firstborn son it is a huge source of shame to the family and it's taken as a sign that the parents are sinning behind closed doors it's taken as evidence that the parents did not raise that child correctly because remember in the ifb and iblp there's a protocol for rebellious children you read these books, you watch these DVDs with them because the CDs will not work. You take them on a mission trip, yada, yada, yada. You follow the system, break their spirit, send them to alert camp or that ATI training center if you really have to. And what you get, the product at the end of that process is that your kid is fixed. Everything's all better now. Jesus, Jesus fixed it. And that kid then goes on to continue being a part of the church, part of the IBLP, raising their kids that way. And you get to make sanctimonious Facebook posts about how God fixed your rebellious child. And if your kid is rebellious, I'm scare quoting that every time. (laughs) If your kid is rebellious Mm. and you do the process and it doesn't fix them, that means that either you have a deep-seated sin and God is judging you for your sin by making your kid fuck up, or you didn't do the process right and you're a liar. So even in the IFB, which is less, much less severe with this idea, I remember growing up, my dad telling us that if we didn't behave, he could lose his job because a qualification for a man that seeks to be a pastor is that he rules his own house well. So if a pastor has a rebellious kid, that pastor can lose his job and not be able to pastor anymore. So how does Jim Bob not lose his status after everything that Josh has done? That's I don't know. That's what's the mystery to me. And that's what kind of that's what gets under my skin about this. Mm. If it were anyone else, they would not have the support of the IBLP to be running for office they wouldn't have any status they'd be expected to live a quiet life of shame for the rest of their life and they would be considered unqualified to seek that kind of leadership position so but i that's, guess he's that's like, what that's what grinds my gears about this thing but he's like is he so famous like outside of that that like he's like teflon and it doesn't stick to him because that's what I i'm sort of seeing know. i can't figure it out and See, I, I, I want to yeah. say something and not make a specific accusation. So I'm going to use my words carefully here for once. <laughs> um, Jim Tell Bob it. Duggar made a lot of money off of the TV shows that he and his family were on. That's and it. that's it. That's all I want to say. That's that's a good uh, point to make. So let's uh, move on from that. Let's take a look at this district itself. Uh, OK, so it's the Arkansas 7th State Senate District outside of Fayetteville, very conservative area. So I assume that Jim Bob is going to be running against another conservative politician. That's going to be his main opponent. It's going to be in the primary, not the general election. Do you think that the average conservative Arkansan, is that it? Arkansan? I don't know. I I, say Arkansan. I think that's right. I think I've heard that before. The general conservative Arkansan would vote for a self-proclaimed biblical patriarch with a son who is an alleged pedophile. I don't know. It's certainly possible. I can tell you for sure it's possible. My opinion is that it's not probable. We know that the IBLP does not take child sexual assault very seriously. They are despicable in how they treat that topic. Just the worst. But the saving grace of the average conservative person, and something that I often find a connection point with conservative people in, is that the average, not IBLP, but the average run-of-the-mill conservative person is really invested in the safety of children. 100%. This is the kind of thing that you can make a connection point with people on because I'm invested in the safety of children. And somebody who's very conservative may have different ideas from me on how best to accomplish that. But we have the same thing that we are invested in. This is how that ridiculous adrenochrome myth has taken so much foothold among conservatives. Whoever whoever made that up and is using it for their own political gain knows that most conservatives exhibit the truly virtuous quality of concern for protecting children. And whoever is using that is using that virtue to turn people into to turn people to their side politically. Same with politicians like Trump, who is not by most people's standards a moral man, 
that he professed to be against abortion and people who believe that preventing abortions is saving the lives of children, like we talked about in our abortion episode. Uh, we do not believe in discounting people's firmly held beliefs on this show, even if we don't think they're correct. Somebody who really believes that being against abortion is a stance against murder will follow politicians like that. They're not, they're not stupid. They're just misguided. But seeing that the safety of children is already a race-deciding issue for conservative voters, I would like to think that this seriously hurts Jim Bob Duggar's chances. So the average conservative voter is not going to vote for somebody who does not take pedophilia seriously. That makes I sense. I wouldn't think so. I really yeah. wouldn't think so because these are the same conservatives who will decide who will decide their vote in a presidential race over who they perceive to protect children better. Yeah. So I would think that they would not be about voting for somebody who is actively enabling a pedophile. See, this is the whole thing. This is like the whole way that they've gone with the whole scare tactic about the, the transgender bathroom bills, because mm. they're like, oh, no, it's to it's to keep people from it's to like protect the, the children in, in the bathrooms. And, you know, like from it is to keep cis identified men from pretending to be women and entering bathrooms under false pretenses to prey on women and small children, which is not a thing that happens. Not like, mm. like I feel like I, if a cis identified man were going to prey on somebody, he would just do it. He would just walk into the bathroom or he would just do it wherever he felt like because rapists yeah. tend to just kind of do that when and where they want to. Rape is more illegal than going into the wrong bathroom. Right. Um, the, he, Jim Bob is probably going to bring that up because we know that Michelle Duggar uh, campaigned to to try to get people to vote a certain way on, the, on that issue. Oh, and that's why their show got canceled, right? Or their no, show got... So that so the thing about Michelle Duggar's robocall broke like a month before the Josh, the original molestation scandal broke. And then it was the combination of those two things that got the show canceled. And then right after the show canceled, I think, is when the Ashley Madison thing came out. Uh, I think I've got that timeline right. I just want to say I would share a bathroom with literally any trans woman before I'd be in a room alone with Josh Duggar. Any room. Like even, okay, Caitlyn Jenner. I really don't like her. I don't like her at all. I am 100% sure that I'd be safer with her than Josh Duggar. Unless she's driving. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's that's mean. That's fucking terrible. Uh, no, but okay. So, but like, so say Jim Bob Duggar like hits heavy on this uh, transgender people in the bathroom thing, and then he comes out like hits heavy on critical race theory. Mm -hmm. Do you think that like do you think there's a chance that he could beat like your average run of the mill conservative? But I guess your average run of the mill conservative is also going heavy on these things these days, probably. So yeah, in Arkansas, I'm sure that they are, and you've got it correct. Yeah. I think that Jim Bob just has to beat some other conservative. The most recent representative in that district was a Republican who ran unopposed. Yeah. So it's not unlikely okay. that Jim Bob would just have to win the primary, and then he might run unopposed. Yeah, so I I wonder if Jim Bob's success in this election is going to depend on the outcome of Josh's trial. I think that's possible, but I also am still one hundred percent holding out hope that if he that if Josh really did it, that he will be convicted and go to jail. Oh, he better. He definitely did that shit allegedly. I, I, I think he did. So obviously guilty. He's so obviously guilty. Oh my god. Yeah, I like. I think you're right. I don't I don't want to make the assertion right now because of the because of the way I'm getting myself in the headspace to cover this case in in a month. Yeah, true. As far as Jim Bob's chances, I don't think they're particularly good. One reason that I think this is that Jed Jedediah Duggar just recently lost his state house of representatives race against a Democratic woman. And that mm. was before Josh Duggar got arrested. Wait, so so Jedediah Duggar, he's one of the sons. Yeah, he's in the middle somewhere. Twins with Jeremiah just got married to Katie. They've already made a pregnancy announcement, I think. I hate that I know this off the top of my head. Wait, he just got married. How old is he? Is he 18? No, that's Justin, who just got married and is 18. Justin married Claire Spivy. Her mom is weird. I, I know all of this. I'm not reading from notes. I know this, and I hate that I know it. I hate that I know it. Um... <laughs> Ah. No, Jed, I'm trying to think how old Jed would be. I think he's like 22, 23. He's pretty young, but he's over 21. Mm. Um, younger than me, over 21. 
but Jed, he just lost the state House of Representatives race to Megan Godfrey, who is not only a woman, but also a Democrat. So although Jim Bob seems Double to be burn. running in a different oh. district, I think that gives us an idea of the political climate in the general area. So you've got to wonder, though, say you're from Arkansas. It's got to be annoying that the main thing that people know about your state is that that's where the Duggars are. You know, like like maybe you're thinking, OK, their show is getting canceled and the son is probably going to jail for being a pedophile. Maybe we can rid ourselves of these yahoos and build a reputation so that people will know us for the friendliness of our residents, the beauty of the Ozarks and the cheesiness of our grits. You know, I think people in the area would probably like that a lot. I would like that better. <laughs> um, from what I've read, uh. Jim Bob's reputation in the area is pretty much in the toilet. Jim Bob took all the TLC money and invested into rental properties. And he's known for being a really shitty landlord. Mm. The family is also known for being that giant group of people that show up in a bus to the restaurant and they are bad tippers. <laughs> At least, according oh. to an anonymous internet commenter who claims to be a restaurant worker in the area. So none of that is confirmed, obviously. You can't because it's, do that. It's just somebody on the internet. People on the internet say things. But even if some of the people that are talking on the internet are telling the truth, the Duggars are not well liked in the area. So it might turn out that people will vote for another candidate in the primary just so they don't have to deal with him. Because from everything I'm reading, they're really disliked in their general area. I want to back up real quick. So you're telling me that this family is showing up to restaurants in a coach bus with like 25 people on board and they're not tipping 20%. That's what people on the internet are saying. That I Again... I can't confirm mm. it. I have no way of confirming it, but I have to admit it has the ring of truth. So if you're a restaurant and you get a reservation for a Jim Bob party of 25, got to make sure that you charge that automatic 20% gratuity for large parties. Otherwise, the waitress who is ostensibly going to have to deal with Josh leering at her over his plate of fajitas is not going to be properly compensated for that grossness. Although for me... I don't know if I were a woman, if I were a waitress, a $10,000 tip would not be enough to compensate for that much grossness. I, I don't think the Cracker Barrel has the ability to do automatic gratuity. Is that where they eat the Cracker Barrel? That's what I've heard. I, I'm trying oh, you to... know what Dinah said Di th th in the Dinah interview? Dinah was like, uh, 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 I, I was at the restaurant and oh, yeah. there was a bus outside. Do you remember that? Yeah, that, that I do remember that. Wasn't that Cracker Barrel? No, it was a Mexican restaurant oh, with well, bottomless right. margs. You're right. I was, I was, I was a wine mom, Sadie, on that episode. <laughs> <laughs> we had mimosas. Oh man, I had go back. Listen to Pride Month uh, interview <laughs> with the ex uh, fundy drag queen uh, Dinah Housefire. That was one of the Friend funniest of the things we've ever done. God, <laughs> that one, that one was Loved that one get... was great. I was like fresh off maternity leave, sleepless, drinking. <laughs> I was so good on us. <laughs> That's my best work, uh, let me tell you. Yeah. Sadie, a serious investigative reporter. <laughs> Talking about gay demons. Gay demons. Right, the Chinese, the, the gay, gay demon demons in the and the Chinese, Chinese ring. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Like in The Exorcist. Oh, man. Yeah. Anyway. Fuck, that was the funniest shit. Um. Dinah, we love you. Come back on the show whenever you want. Whenever you want to, like, whenever we're just like, we need to do something that's going to be fucking ridiculous. Let's just get Dinah back on. That would be fine with me. <laughs> yeah, I'm just thinking if I was if I was the waitress at a restaurant and I had to serve a party, including Josh Duggar, it would be so hard to not just happen to slip and fall with a large tray of hot coffee in my hands while standing right next to him. I, I feel like that would be maybe too difficult for me to handle. Honestly, restaurant workers deserve the world because I don't know if I'd be able to pass up that kind of golden opportunity. So I just looked it up and the minimum wage for tipped employees in the state of Arkansas is $11 an hour, which isn't amazing, but it's better than I expected it to be. 
that's way better than I expected. I thought it was going to be like two seventy five because that's what you hear it is in some places. Is that like it's yeah. it's two seventy five plus tips? I mean, you couldn't live on that in Portland, but I assume Arkansas is significantly cheaper than Portland. So I don't want to back to the the Jim Bob running for office thing, which is why we're here to begin with. <laughs> I don't want to undersell the danger of what is going on here by saying, "Oh, it's fine. I don't think he'll win." I also don't want to seem like I think that all religious people have no place in politics. I think it's dangerous to have people in politics who have religious beliefs that are founded on taking rights away from people other than themselves. I, I, I think if somebody in government believes that doing a certain thing is a sin, eh, whatever. If somebody in government believes that doing that thing is a sin and you should take away people's rights to do it, that's more of a problem for me. That being said, at the time of this recording, I'm still really hopeful about Josh seeing major jail time if he's convicted. I'm pretty optimistic about him getting convicted, and I'm still really hopeful that Jim Bob will not be winning this state Senate race. Yeah, I'm also not a lawyer, but if this thing, like if this Josh thing really comes down to a conviction and it comes out that Jim Bob knew that there this was like an issue and like because Jim Bob owns the dealerships, right? Um, Does he? It's not clear. There was a lot of sell it to this person in the family for a dollar and moving. There, there was uh, moving money around, and now everything's in Anna's name. Interesting. Okay, for so reasons. there was an issue with Jim Bob enabling him, which is in, like, what's the result of that? Does Jim Bob have civil liability, or is there like criminal liability with that? I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. I don't think there's criminal liability unless Jim Bob Lake printed off images and passed them to Josh. Or what if he knew uh, that there was some, that, like, something was fishy going on with his son and then he didn't do anything about it? Okay, so just, actually, like, so I've been um, watching some, some legal TV and I've also been in a business law course, which I have finals for this week. <laughs> Send thoughts and prayers. What I've learned about legal liability for knowing something is that the prosecution has to prove that you knew it. And proving that someone knew something is pretty hard because you can't see somebody's thoughts. You have to, so in order to convict somebody for something they knew and didn't fix, didn't report, whatever, you have to produce physical evidence like an email, a text message, a letter, uh, witnesses that will that will prove that they knew you can't just say they knew you have to show how they knew so mm. so prosecuting somebody for knowing something and failing to report failing to do anything about it is notoriously difficult hey i knew a legal thing that was fun so i don't i don't think like there's any problem with him running for office um but i don't think it's going to help his campaign yeah i think as long as as somebody is a really good challenger we can stay optimistic about Jim Bob staying the heck out of government. Oh, man, I would I would just hate to have to deal with it, to live in Arkansas and have to deal with that, man. They got other stuff to worry about. Well, but, let's all let's all yeah. stay optimistic. I'm trying to I'm trying to paint an optimistic thing going into the trial because frankly, none of us need the stress. Yeah, so I think that's about all that we have to say about this issue. Uh thanks for listening to us just kind of ramble about it anyway uh if you want to hear us talk about the josh duggar trial we're going to be doing that when that happens in like a three four weeks whenever that is uh and we'll give you updates on that when that's going on if you want to follow the podcast on social media you can follow us on facebook and instagram at leaving eden podcast on twitter at leaving eden pod you can uh join our facebook group uh facebook.com slash groups slash eden exodus uh, also, reddit.com slash r slash Eden Exodus, whichever one of those is your preferred method of communication. Sadie, do you want to plug your social media? Sure. You can follow me on Instagram at Sadie Carpenter Music. You can follow me on Twitter at Hell yeah, Sadie. You can also follow me on TikTok at Sadie Carpenter One. Uh, I'm actually doing some some series on there that I think are going to be really interesting coming out in the next couple of days whenever I'm done with finals. That'll be really good. Uh, and you can uh, follow me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Clubhouse at G-A-V-R-I-E-L-H-A-C-O-H-E-N. And 
make sure you tune in for Monday's episode. We're going to be talking about how to deprogram somebody from a cult, which is wild to think that we haven't talked about this before, but this that's our topic for, for Monday. So make sure you tune into that one. I didn't think people would care about like the nitty gritty steps of like, this is how you do it. But apparently people do. So people want it. I'm happy to, happy to oblige. So tune in on Monday. Uh, and until then, we'll see you guys uh, later. Have a great day. Bye-bye. The old rolling river of time Healed me in too many days No regrets, no confusion There'll be no pollution I'm so thankful I've decided I'm